Hello, ladies. How are you? I'm on my third computer this morning trying to test this out. And I feel like Facebook made some updates this week and they're not looking good. But good morning. Okay, I think the shaking may. Um, do you ladies see? Okay, I'm going to need your feedback here. Do you see the video and me shaking? And how is my audio? I'm going to need you to let me know in the comments because I see shaking on my side. And at first I thought it was my computer, so I'm kind of relieved that it's not. Oh, there's my cat. Hello, Penelope. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good morning. Hey, Alana. So do you ladies see what I'm talking about? Do you see this shaking? Because I see it. There it is, see, right there? Audio's perfect. Okay, awesome, how is the video? Do you see that? Video's good on your side? Okay, I'm gonna test it one more time right now and see, I'll let you know when it shakes on my end and then maybe I'll just have to ignore it. See, did that just happen on your end? Did it just go woo? Maybe? Let me know, Rebus. I don't see shaking. Okay, so maybe it's just on our side. If it does, if the video does shake on your side, let me know because it's still shaking on my end. Um, so I'm gonna try not to pay attention to it <laughs> and just look at your comments. You're gonna have to keep me engaged today because the shaking's a little distracting. But good morning, hello. It looks like tech is uh, giving us a little bit of trouble this week. I couldn't come on yesterday. So today I am going to do a training on productivity. I know a lot of people have been asking about how to be more productive at home and how to just increase your productivity. The thing that I wanna ask you too is, has being at home made you less productive or just more aware of your productivity? Because I know there's a couple of things. When I started working from home, and I've been working from home for over five years, and when I first started working from home, it was kind of nice because you don't have anybody else's mood and shit like in your thing, in your view. And you don't have anybody, anybody else's grumpiness. It's all you. So the only person that you can blame for your mood and your lack of productivity is yourself. But when you're at work, you know, you're talking to people, other people's moods and drama gets in the way. So this is such a really good opportunity for you to really own your productivity, your mood and how you show up in your day, whether it be through routines, which we've talked about and or other tips and tools. So I'm going to give you a bunch of different tips today. Specifically, I'm going to give you four overall planning tips. And then I'm going to give you seven daily exercises that you can do to make yourself more productive. I hope they work. I use them. And productivity is still very subjective per person. Be very aware of what works for you and be willing to try things out for a couple of weeks so that you can really see what works for you. Okay. So my four overall tips for productivity, and I'm just going to give you lots this morning. Number one is your routines and energy. Taking ownership of how you feel before going into your activities is really important. Knowing, okay, I feel good. When you feel good, you're going to get more done and you're going to get it done faster. When you're feeling off and you haven't found your alignment before you take action, I always find my action isn't as good and it takes me a lot longer. So your number one goal before going into any of your routines and activities is energy and alignment, okay? Number three, or number two, I'm going backwards. Number two is I actually take the last week off of every month and I take it off of video calls, phone calls, there's a reason for this. So often it is 
we get really caught up in meetings and, and phone calls and videos, but it prevents us from actually moving our work and our business forward. So the last week of every month, no calls. It's all me, all my business. And you can do this too, even if you're working for an employer and talk to them. You know, I'm finding I'm getting really bogged down with meetings and I really wanna stay focused to move this project forward. Do you mind if I don't take any calls the last week of the month? This was taught to me by one of my coaches and I use it and it is it saves me. I really look forward to the last week. It regenerates my energy and keeps me more engaged when moving forward. So love that. Number three is your to-do list. So I get lots of questions on to-do lists and I'm gonna break this down into a couple of steps. When I do my to-do list, I do my to-do list for the month, my week, and my day. So I'm going to break this down and tell you exactly how I do this, okay? So I have goals of what I bigger, bigger objections or objectives, bigger objectives that I would like to get done in that month. So I write down and I'm gonna actually bring in my next tip to make this a little bit more clear. So I write down my three big rocks, okay? And the reason I call them big rocks, and you can look this up on YouTube, have you ever seen that YouTube video where you have big rocks, pebbles, sand, and water, and you have to fit it all in this vase? And all these people try to put it in, they put the pebbles, they put the sand, then they put the water, then the rocks, the only way you're going to get it all in is if you put the big rocks first because the big rocks go first and you can kind of visualize it with me and then the sand and the water and the small pebbles trickle in to the empty spots so our life is kind of the same so what i want you to do when you're planning your to-do list for the month and for the weekend of the day you can use this objection objective i don't know why i keep saying that this morning you can use this objective what are my three big rocks? The three big things I want to get done. So for me, those three big rocks this week were, um, of course, I'm building a course. I hope you ladies are as excited as I am. I'm modifying the TLC membership to give you more value and all of that jazz. And then content. So those are my three big rocks. That's it. Course, membership, content. And so what are your three big rocks? And the beautiful thing about these three big rocks is that when you get thrown something to do, if it doesn't fit into those three big rocks, it goes into an other list that you look at after. Okay, you look at, you know, maybe it's the next month or the next week, but you're focusing on the big rocks. So in order to be productive, obviously it's focus. What are you focusing on and what are you choosing to put your time towards? So for me, these three big rocks really help. So now going back to my to-do list. So I have my big rocks, but on my to-do list, I actually have two lists. One is my to-do list. And the second list is I write universe on it. And it's just like a fun little, um, little exercise. And let me explain how I differentiate. On your to-do list, and let's be honest, girl, the only thing that you have to do today goes on your to-do list. Literally the only thing, like the really important. And if we're being honest, there's probably two, maybe three things that need to get put onto your to-do list for the day. Send an email, do this. You know, the must do's go on your to-do list. Everything else goes on the universe to-do list. This, in my opinion, for me, alleviates so much pressure. When your to-do list is 15 items long of things that you don't even really need to do, it is very overwhelming. If your to-do list is only two or three things, easy, easy peasy. And then after you're done those two or three things, you can then go to your longer to-do list, your universe to-do list, and you can pick and choose what you want to work on as long as it's still staying within your big rocks. Okay, is this making sense? And the reason I call it my universe to-do list 
is because I take it away from me. And you'll be amazed at how often things on that to-do list actually start to get done without you doing them. People that you needed to talk to will start to call you and it'll all just kind of fall into place. Okay. Now I look at my to-do list. I look at it for the month. Like what are my ideals that I want to get done this month? At the end of the month, what would I love to get done in order to think it was a great month? Okay. So going back to those bigger items, then on my week, the same thing, what would I love to get done this week? And then I look at it and prep the night before for my day. So the key is prepping the night before of what do you have to do the next day? And again, only keeping it to a couple items and or a theme. If you don't have anything that you have to do, like anyone that you have to email or phone call, then stick to a theme. Okay, well today I'm building my course, okay? And in order to help you, get as much done as possible in that day, the prep the night before. So it really helps to, instead of just saying to yourself, oh, tomorrow I'm working on my course. When you go to sit down and write your course the next day, that will be very overwhelming. So it's a lot easier if you say, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna work on my course and you do bullet points and you start the work for the night, for the day, for the next day. Okay, so you start the work the night before for the next day, and that will make it a lot easier for you to get into productivity and actually start working the next day. Does this make sense? So those are my four big tips for planning, and now I'm gonna give you seven tips for everyday planning to help you. Did those tips help me? Let me know which tip helps you the most and what resonates with you the most. Okay, so, here are my seven tips for every day. Number one, emails, okay? Emails are a little bit of trouble because we keep them on all the time, we're always looking at them, and they take, they distract us. So in these seven tips, you'll notice they're all to kind of minimize distraction and keep like activities together. You always wanna be keeping like activities together, like an assembly line, okay? An assembly line moves a lot faster if one person's working on packing, one person is working on wrapping, as opposed to one person trying to do it all. So the same goes for your productivity in your day. Keep like activities together. And I'm gonna give you one more example of that. If you, if you have to send a bunch of emails that are the same to a many different people, and let's say you're copying and pasting, what I do, instead of, taking each email individually, so writing the heading, put in the body, getting the email, and then sending, it's actually not like activities together. So if I have to send 10 emails, I do all the titles first, I copy and paste all the bodies first, and then I put all the emails first, and then I send them. Boop, 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 boop. So I send them all at the same time. So do you see how, try to today when you're doing your work, think about, Am I really batching like activities together? Because our mind can only focus on so many things at a time. If you keep your like activities together, it'll be a lot easier, here comes this word again, for your brain to focus. You wanna be doing the same things. You wanna be doing all of your phone calls at the same time, all of your writing at the same time, all of your emails at the same time, okay? I hope this is helping you. Okay, so, to emails, I only really check my emails a couple of times a day. So I'll check them in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, and then again before I go no tech at night. So limit your email checking to a couple of times a day, and this will help you stay more focused and be less distracted when you are doing your work during the day. It'll keep you on task easier. Same goes for your cell phone. Our cell phone is always here. Put it in another room or turn it over and turn it on silent. So you are not distracted by text messages, notifications, and all of that you know, energy and pressure that's coming from your phone. Really minimizing distractions and staying focused on the task at hand. So move the phone, it makes it a lot easier. 
and just know that people, if you're saying, oh, but I can't, my boss needs me to respond right away. There's no excuse for this. Okay. So then my suggestion to you would be talk to your boss and say, Hey, I'm really finding my phone is distracting or my email's distracting. Is there a way that I can focus on my work and then check my email or my, or my phone a couple of times throughout the day? It's totally nothing on you. I just want to make sure that I'm getting the work done and I'm doing things better. So see if you can be having these conversations with people in your life, clients, your um, employers or colleagues, so that you're able to stay on task. Everybody wants you to be producing at your optimal capacity and the best of your ability. And so if you tell them that this is going to help me to get things done easier and better, then maybe it's a worthwhile conversation. So see there what is what is distracting you throughout your day, emails, phones, or anything else. And now I understand with quarantine, it might be children, <laughs> but, um, but maybe you can even talk to your partner and see, okay, can we have focus time, each one of us, where I can focus on this and you can watch the kids and we'll switch off. So see how you can just stay focused on one task at hand. Okay, the next thing is peak performance hours. So oftentimes when I am working with a client or talking to people and training, oftentimes people don't know what is distracting them and what their peak performance hours are. And there's only one way to do this is to actually keep track of your day. So I'm going to need you to write out all the hours of your day. And I want you to go through when you're finished the hour, or maybe you do it twice a day or in the evening and really go back and say, okay, what did I do from this time to this time? And you'll be amazed when you go back and you think, holy crap, what did I do for an hour or an hour and a half between these two phone calls or after lunch? What took me so long? So start to really gather data and start to be accountable to what you're doing. Keep track, get your own data for productivity to see how this works for you. So this will help you in both ways. Number one, it will tell you when you're wasting time and when you can be more productive and really keep you accountable to your outputs and what you're actually putting out there and the results that you're driving with your productivity. Because at the end of the day, if you're thinking, what did I do today and what did I actually create or produce and you don't know, then we got to go back into more detail and every hour go, okay, what am I doing right now? What did I do? And stay accountable to your activity. The second thing it'll do is log your peak performance hours. I want you to be very aware of when you are most productive. Are you most productive in the morning? you know, 11 o'clock, just before lunch, right after lunch, what are your hours that you're most productive? It's important to know this because once you know your peak performance hours, it's your job not to book anything in that time, knowing that you're most focused in that time and you're going to minimize all distractions and make sure that you're as focused as possible during your peak performance hours. Is this making sense? Okay. Has anybody done this? Cause this was something that my mentor taught me and I had no idea what my peak performance hours are. And I actually have two, right? So I get two surges. So in my morning and in my day, so I'd say like 11 to 12 or to two, and then I'll get another surge after. But again, it really depends on if I'm batching like activities together. And the beautiful thing about working from home, is you can, I really focus on my energy as well. So if I'm not feeling, I'm going to, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into this topic right now. Cause if I'm not feeling it, I have to be really honest. Can I meditate quickly or go for a walk to bring me into a better energetic state when doing this work? And, or do I just need to pull it together and do something? Because a lot of times productivity will bring you into alignment.
because then you're feeling more confident and better about yourself and you're feeling excited that you got stuff done. So sometimes the key to lack of productivity is to just push it a little bit and just do something because productivity will make you feel good. Wins will make you feel good, even if it's small wins. So if you're setting up small goals for yourself, so set up small goals for yourself so that you can have small wins so that you feel more confident and you feel more productive in your day. The small wins is a really important one. So I'm actually adding that in and that's technically eight little, little tips. Okay. So then the next one is when you're looking at your to-do list, do your hardest thing first. Again, this kind of ties to the small wins, right? You want to do the hardest thing first. So you feel good about yourself and you get stuff done. And then everything else after that hard thing is easy breezy and try to prep. Now, if we're tying all of our tips together, try to prep that hardest thing first the night before. We also have a comment in here that they said the night before prepping really helps. Yes. Okay. Going into the next step, we only have two more steps and these are going to be repetitive because I've mentioned them already. Number, um, number five, or we have three left. Number five is batching like things together. We've talked about this. Number six is prepping the night before. So even if in your day you have prep time. So let's say you finish work at five, then five to 5.30 you prep. So always have the same prep time for the day for the next day. Now going into our last tip for daily, social media, right? This is minimizing, this goes back to minimizing distractions, turning your phone off, turning notifications off and keeping like activities together, okay? So also I wanted to mention a couple little bonus tips here and let me know if you have questions just as we're finishing up this training, but a couple bonus tips. Have you heard of the Pomodoro technique? And Pomodoro is actually a tomato in Italian. So the Pomodoro technique has a few steps here, okay? So number one, we are going to pick what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it for 25 minutes. Then you're gonna work, you're gonna set your alarm for 25 minutes. You're gonna work on that task for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, you get a five minute break. You're gonna do that cycle four times. So. You're going to choose a task, set your alarm for 25 minutes, focus on that task for 25 minutes until the alarm goes off, five minute break. You do it four times. After you've done it four times, you can take a 15 to 30 minute break. So you can see again, focus, 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 keep like activities together, minimize all distractions so you can focus on one thing at a time. So you can try the Pomodoro technique. It works really great for writing and content and things that you want to be focused on, which is a lot of things, right? And so looking at your task and seeing, uh, how am I feeling? Am I in the right energetic space to do this? And how can I minimize all distractions to get it done faster and easier? If you maximize your productivity, honestly, when I started working from home, I did more in a faster time span than I ever did working at an office. I can get more done in a day than most people can get done in a week at an office. Okay. And that's where, you know, these 40 hour work weeks or four hour work weeks come in. I knew that sounded wrong. And people can start getting a lot more done faster. And then you can start taking a little bit more time for you and focusing on <clears throat> your mindset, <clears throat> reading, learning and educating yourself the same things that we've been talking about over training for the past couple of weeks okay i have some questions coming in right now i just started tracking my time a few weeks ago just to see and identify patterns awesome i realized i can't change what i don't know a hundred percent i can't go oh there you're so cute okay so tell me what did you realize in your when you were tracking your time did you realize that you were wasting time or that you had some trends in the data you were gathering? I'd love to know what came up for you. Next thing, tomato timer, see? 
Um, there's also timers online that can guide you through cycles. That's great to know. I actually didn't know there were other timers online. So if you want to time yourself, check out different timers online. Any other questions as we finish up today's training? And I just want to circle back. Was my video okay? Because it is not okay on my side. So let me know if my video and audio is okay on your end. Okay, we are just finishing up our productivity training. And I have to give a special shout out to two of my productivity experts, uh, Craig Valentine, who's one of my coaches, and Alyssa Coleman, who has done many workshops with TLC. I will actually link their productivity trainings as well in the description above, because if you wanna dive more into productivity, I'll link their trainings and I know you're gonna love them. They're really great people and really good at what they do. Any other questions or struggles with regards to productivity that you may want to workshop right now and or you want clarity on on the tips that I gave you? Anything? If not, just send me a heart and say goodbye. Okay, I think we are finishing up, but I do want to give one more minute because I know sometimes when you're typing in, it takes a little bit longer to get in the your questions. Okay. I don't see any coming in. Oh, sounds great. Okay, Revis, we're good. Uh, lots of dead space in your day, but there was so much you were, um, I was accomplishing that was, I, I wasn't acknowledging myself for. That's really important. So a comment here that just came in is that when she tracked her day, she realized she was accomplishing a lot more than she thought she was. And that can happen too. And so start celebrating yourself. And this is where gratitudes come into play. How can you be more grateful and how can you celebrate your success? Because it's gonna make you feel better about yourself and then in turn, you're gonna do better, right? It's kind of like health and nutrition. When you eat better, you wanna eat better. And you wanna, when you work out, you wanna eat better. Everything's all linked to you know, your productivity and how you feel about yourself. And so make it as easy as possible for you and set yourself up for success. Okay, awesome. I'm going to sign out. Ladies, thank you so much for being here and for joining me on our training today. We are going to do training again tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Let me know if you're still on right now. What would you prefer? Because I know we had to push training from yesterday. So do you want to chat about business or mindset tomorrow? Um, I'm leaning towards business and sales. Would you like to talk about sales tomorrow? I will, yeah, I'm leaning towards sales, but feel free to comment. I am going to follow your comments. If you have any questions, feel free to keep posting in here. And then I will see you tomorrow morning. And hopefully um, you guys have a lovely day. Sending you so much love and good vibes. Bye for now.